Hello everyone and welcome to the Great Revel. I'm your host Poseidon. And today, of course, with Modern Horizons 2, um, I can't help but talk about it, you know. Um, after this whole Modern Horizons 2 thing is done, I will be uh, looking at metagames and results and whatnot, but I, I, I think that not uh, talking about Modern Horizons 2 right now is just not the move. Like, I'm really excited about it. The set looks amazing. Um, there are lots of fun cards that are being spoiled, some really strong, some really fun, but I'm really excited to play with this set. Um, but I will, I will, I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> that sentence got away from me. I want to make a set review, uh, like a proper set review, after everything's been spoiled and probably released because the set's being spoiled and then immediately released on Magic Online. But I want to make a proper set uh, review. Uh, so today I'm not going to be talking about all the cards that are on Modern Rising Sue, the, the ones that have been spoiled so far. I do want to talk about the ones that I'm going to be playing that have been revealed um, so far. So there are a couple of cards that are interesting, um, and I think that it's 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 pretty obvious that the first one I'm going to talk about is Flame Rift. So Flame Rift is being reprinted into Modern. Uh, if you don't know the card, it's, it costs a 1 and a red. It's a sorcery, and it reads, Flame Rift deals 4 damage to each player. Very simple. For Boros Burn, it's like a worse Boros Charm. However, however, having another card that deals 4 damage is really big. Boros Charm has been a very strong card since I've been playing Burn. Specifically because it's, 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 it's inherent card advantage, right? It's like you're dealing 2 damage worth of cards in one card, and that's huge for burn uh it's especially huge because uh, your opponent started at 20 and um your three damage spells uh don't don't add up to 20 and with two four damage spells being cast so that can be boros charm now rift bolt uh, and a goblin guide attacking twice you then are in a place where you only need to resolve six spells instead of seven which is, is, it's really huge. So Flame, Flame Rift is being printed. Um, the card's really strong. I think that I'll be testing out four uh, when the set gets released. Uh, the symmetric damage isn't, isn't um, irrelevant, by the way. So do be careful about that. Um, my first iteration of the deck with Flame Rift will be cutting... Well, I was already cutting Eidolon of the Great Revel. Uh, now because I'll probably be cutting some skull crack for this, uh, just because this is a better main board card. Uh, I'll be testing out four um, at first, even though I think I think the correct number might be two, um, as like Boros Charm four and uh, five and six. But I will be testing four just to see how just to see how well it performs. I think that in a, in a deck like Burn, when you're trying out new cards. Um, you want to max them out to see how they perform. Um, th th this can be not true if it's like a, a one of those cards. Like if if if, if you wanted to test Grim Lava Mancer, it would be hard to test that more than one because you know the second one is always awkward, um, and, and it's the reason I still haven't tested Biblioplex from Strixhaven because I think I think the card could be really strong, especially now if you're dropping a creature for another sorcery, then Biblioplex is probably really strong at going long. Um, but I still haven't tested it out because it's it's going to be a single, uh, and I kind of don't want to play tons of matches with it. Um, just to get a feel for it, uh, especially with Modern Horizon 2 coming out so soon. But it's something that I do want to test in the future. Now, I do think that Flame Rift won't make Burn that much better. I think it's a nice buff, but not something that would push the deck to to a place where it's too strong or even, you know, meta-relevant. I do think that Burn cannot be meta-relevant anymore. Um, 
not because of power, but because whenever someone wants to get into the format, now they don't default to burn. That used to be the the case, you know, someone wanted to play modern and they ask, hey, what deck's cheap and easy to play? Uh, and burn would be the answer, which, you know, is fair. The deck is kind of cheap, uh, especially compared when, w- with other decks that play very expensive cards. We play a lot of commons and uncommons that are just cheap. And the deck is honestly easy to pick up. Like, you can pick up Burn and win a couple of games just because, you know, Plan A is very simple. It plays simple cards. Um, and, of course, uh, I think I've talked about this. Uh, that I think that Burn's easy to pick up, but hard to master. But the easy to pick up part is the relevant one here. Um, however, with Prowess now existing, being in the same um in the same realm of price which is you can play mono red or you can play two colors with 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 uh, i think the mana base is about the same price because one's yeah they play the mana base are pretty much the same uh, except one has blue the other has white and the main board cards are pretty cheap probably except for soul scar mage and then the cyber cards aren't anything too expensive uh, as well, so it's very easy for 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 people to nowadays point at Prowess and say, no, no, that's the deck you want to pick up if you want to learn the format because it's been it's been it's been making tons of results, um, which I think it's kind of funny. I I I did want to talk about that, but then Modernizer starts coming started hitting hard. Um, but but a little a little tangent here. I do think that Prowess is very good. However, I don't think it's a I don't think it's too good. Like last week, I think it made. There was a big tournament and Prowess made like five or six top eight spots and people were like, oh shit, is this when Lavadar gets banned or Manamorphos gets banned? Or you know, the, 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 the really thick-headed people were like, oh, is this where Swift Spear gets banned? Um, no, no. I think that Prowess is fine right now. I do think that people are kind of dumb when they're building their decks. Uh, you see a lot of... You see a lot of people putting life gain in their decks to beat prowess which is just plain wrong and you also see a lot of people not playing removal um which which to me is bonkers because that's how you beat prowess you play removal um if you look at amulet titan right now they're playing dismembers in the main board and run a foul in the sideboard just to beat prowess and the crazy thing who knew it works because if you remove prowess's creatures their deck just doesn't function um, and I say this as someone that beats Prowess quite consistently because you know when you're playing a deck with 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 so many bolts, their creatures never stick, um, and 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 the matchup is honestly one of the easiest ones for burn. Um, but I digress. I digress. It, w- with Modern Rise and Sue coming out, people will probably start brewing new things so so the 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 the, the magic online spikes probably won't be on prowess any, any longer which will you know it will shift away prowess's popularity towards other things which which i think is also a big deal like a lot of people were high on prowess of course if lots of people are playing the deck because they like it slash think it's good uh, it's obviously going to make more results even if it's not uh, above the rest of the format like you, you give a good player a deck and they make results with it no matter how good slash mediocre the deck is um i was on flame rift uh, yeah i don't think i want to say anything else about flame rift uh pretty cool card um probably doesn't change burn too much but maybe just enough for the deck to to keep on pushing um it it, it could also be relevant in in scourge decks because it does put scourge away from bolt range um, which is pretty nice, and then and empower shadow. It could be pretty nice there. Uh, what other? Uh, I had other spells to talk about. Oh, this one was spoiled a little earlier today. It's oh, where is it? It's not on Scryfall yet, so I kind of have to open it up somewhere. Okay, uh, Sanctifier Angvek. Why would they name it that? Um, costs a white and a white. It's a creature, a human cleric. Being a human is going to be re- very relevant for this card, by the way. It's a 2-2, so it's a bear. It's a hate bear. Uh, it has protection from black and from red. Well, these two protections... I don't know why wizards keep putting these two protections in cards, but it's pretty insane. Um, 
And this one is also pretty insane because this card is a rest in peace with legs. That's it. It ETBs, exiles. Uh, oh, it only exiles black and red cards. That's that's it. But it's a, a rest in peace with legs. So it, when, ETB, when it ETBs, you exile all cards that are black or red from all graveyards. And if a black or red permanent spell or card not on the battlefield would be put into the graveyard, exile it instead. So it's a replacement effect. So this is rest in peace with legs that doesn't die to lightning bolt um, and fatal push, which are like the two big removal spells that uh, red black decks would be playing. Um, so first of all, this 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 makes Dredge a laughable matchup. If you resolve this against Dredge, they lose. Um, uh, assuming you dealt with their board if they did develop it beforehand, but this just straight up kills Dredge. Um, they, they they can't have creeping chills doing things. They can't have ox doing things. Uh, they can't have their prize amalgams, their blood ghasts, their conflag conflagrates and do anything. It's insanely strong against Dredge. Um, it's a little harder to cast. That's that that could be relevant. It's a it's white white to cast, and that could be relevant. So it, it's not guaranteed that you'll have that mana to cast this on turn to every game. But I still think it's worth it over Rest in Peace because this attacks. Like I've been, I've been wanting this card for a while. Um, it would be cool if it hit every color because uh, there are some decks that this doesn't work as well. But this being a creature means that you can attack with it. So it's not only a hate piece. You get to clock with it, which is something that Burn really wants. Like our our sideboard cards can't just be. Um, Hate effects that don't do anything else. Like, them dealing damage is very good. And I, I've been dropping Rest in Peace because I, I never thought it was impactful enough. But this being a creature is impactful enough to make it worth it, I think. Uh, because now you can just play the control role. You know, this since Dredge can kill this, you can just sit on it. Uh, unlike Rest in Peace, like Dredge could kill Rest in Peace. So you couldn't just sit on it and, you know, chill out, play the control role, take it slow. Um, so I'm really excited for this card. Um, it's, uh, but, but I gotta say, um, I kind of feel for my, for my, for my dredge bros because, wow. I, I know, I know how bad a 2-2 hate bear against your critical mass deck can be. You know, Core Firewalker exists. And uh, it's about the same level of card as this. Um, not being a human is probably the the biggest the biggest downgrade of Core Firewalker, because this definitely slots in humans. Um, like the, I think humans had a big issue against Dredge because you know Dredge gums up the board the, the the board and then wins through the air with uh, creeping chill and whatnot. And this does seem like a good tool for humans. It also seems like a great tool for control. I was thinking about that earlier. Um, so not only is this a rest in peace that doesn't hit your own graveyard, if you're playing blue-white control, it also hates on shadow because they cannot deal with it. It hates on prowess because this not only blocks their creatures very well, it also disables Lava Dark flashbacks, and this might even be worth it against something like Jun or Rakdos midrange decks, where this just doesn't let Lurus function as a value card. This does, this kind of doesn't let Tarmogoy function as a card. Um, so yeah, this 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 one, in my opinion, is very promising. Oh, I just thought about this. This is probably very good against. Um, uh, Ponza too, because cloth is now doesn't do a thing. And like pro red against against them is actually relevant. Well, wow, this 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 card just keeps getting better. Um, but yeah, I, I I think I think I'm gonna be I, I'm probably not gonna test it right away because I doubt that I want graveyard hate. But this is definitely a card to get from Modern Horizons two. If you're a burn player, uh, get this. Uh, I'd get a playset just to be safe, but you're probably never playing more than three. Although, multiples are cool because they attack. 
That's the cool thing about this one. You don't mind having three in the sideboard just because they attack. That's that's honestly insane. Uh, of course, uh, this doesn't work as well. Like this doesn't work against control, but I uh, I'd argue that you shouldn't be bringing rice and peace against control. So yeah, uh, overall an amazing card for tons of decks, not just burn, but. Uh, Staying, staying, staying true to my theme. Um, this is an amazing card for a burn sideboard. And these two, Flame Rift and Sanctifier Unvec, or you know, rest in peace on stilts, uh, is are, are are the two big cards so far. Uh, we're still holding out on the. the there was a on Morrow's teaser. We know that there's a card where you can. Sacrifice a mountain instead of paying its mana cost. Uh, I'm not really expecting it to be damage or at least good damage. Like maybe it's one damage. If it's one damage, like I will never even think about it. If it's two damage, then I don't know. Maybe there's an argument for playing one or two just because of, of it being, you know, faster. Uh, and I don't think that they would print uh, that effect on th for three damage. I think it's too strong. Uh, if it's a hate card like anti artifacts, it might be cool too. Um, but I'm 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 not too hopeful for that one because I think I think that being free uh, for a mountain, which is a, not a steep cost to it's not a steep cost to to pay, I think they wouldn't put something too crazy there. So that's why I'm hopeful it's a sideboard thing like a, a niche hate card because. I don't believe we'll be getting a a good damage card for for one mountain. What I do believe is that the evoke card, which red the red evoke card, uh, if you don't know what the evoke cycle is, uh, wizards is making for modern horizon two wizards wizards is making a a a a, a cycle of mono colored cards, which are creatures, elementals that do something on ETB. And all of them have the evoke cost that reads instead of uh, that that the alternate evoke cost is simply exiling a, tar a card of the same color from your hand. Uh, so so we've talked about black getting a free thought seize. Uh, we've talked about uh, and that's it. I don't think I talked about any other. The blue one is very bad. The white one is just straight up sword supply shares. Um, and the green one is Gaia's Blessing. I'm really... Uh, okay, I'm I, I'm a bit real. I think, uh, I think that... Oh, okay, let, let, let me actually talk about this. Uh, let, me, let me avoid mumbling too much here. So stuff like Fire Blast, Price of Progress, Pyrostatic Pillar have all been crunched out from being reprinted. Um, which, yeah, uh, it makes sense. Uh, all those cards are very strong and would probably break modern. Uh, especially price of progress. I think that printing price of progress into modern would be such a slap to the face of the format, because the format already has a, a cost to playing multiple colors, right? Um, unlike legacy, where you play a bunch of fetch lands and your duels come in untapped all willy nilly, here they're either coming in coming in tapped um, or you're paying life for them. So I think that modern already has a, a somewhat steep cost to play multiple colors. However, however, I do think that Blood Moon might not be enough um, to 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 dissuade people from playing too many colors or like just greedy lands. Um, so so here's kind of what I want, and I do say kinda because. I'm not sure if I want this. Um, like it would probably be very rough for some decks to deal with. However, I think that the extra cost of costing one extra card um, could be enough. Uh, I, I but I'm I'm kind of hoping, and I know it won't be. By the way, I know that Wizards is gonna make a shitty red card for the Evoke cycle. But what I wish. If I can, if I could sit on Santa's lap, lap right now and make a wish, I would do this. Um, I want the evoke red card to be price of progress, just straight up ETB price of progress. Um, 
I'd like it to be attached to a reasonably costed creature, like a four mana creature that's like a two two with haste, um, or I don't know, first strike that does this, or even just a a, a bear, just a two two that does this on ETB, uh, and you could you know exile a red card from your hand to do this. It could even be a. I'm not even asking for flash on this creature because I think that would be too strong. But I do think that a a price of progress effect um, wouldn't be too detrimental. Um, and I say this because right now you open goldfish. You open goldfish, which I'm doing right now. And like top decks are either red aggro. Not even red aggro. It's prowess because prowess is very strong. Uh, or greedy three, four, five color decks, or big mana in Amulet, Titan, and Trons. Uh, so the 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 meta is very split on on on, on this. You you have Browus beating all these decks, and then all these decks being very greedy with their mana bases. And I'm I'm a I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real here. I think that. The main reason that a Price of Progress card in Modern would be good is because people would stop being so greedy with their colors. It 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 honestly annoys me that I open Goldfish and there's a there's a Scapeshift control deck that's playing every color, Bring to Light, Valky, um, just doing a fuck ton of things. Uh, and then it loses to Browse because guess what? Browse doesn't care if you're if you're <laughs> if you're casting a turn five Valky or a turn even a turn four Valky. I think that people are just uh, they're either underestimating Prowess, which I kind of know they aren't, or they are overestimate or they're underestimating how good, or rather they're overestimating how good some cards are. Um, Yes, Omnath, Locus of Creation, is a very strong card. But its mana cost is actually a downside. It's not that simple to be playing a four-color deck. Um, you lose... Con- you, 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 obje- you objectively are losing consistency by playing a four-color deck. Um, people don't seem to realize this. I also think that Renan 6 is very poorly positioned right now. Like, I genuinely don't know... Why you'd sleeve up a single Renan Six uh, in a Prowess meta? The card is very poor against Prowess. It literally does nothing except tap you. Tap it. It, it only taps you out and says, "Hey, Prowess opponent, if you want to kill me, go for it." Because if you're playing a Renan Six on the draw, you're conceding the game. If you're playing a Renan Six on the draw against Prowess, um, if you're playing a Renan Six on the play, you're still kind of conceding the game. <laughs> So, I don't know. Teferi Time Reveler is also not amazing against Prowess because half their, uh, half their threats have haste and their, their direct damage spells, especially in the Lava Dart, can kill Teferi after, after it bounces something. Uh, so, I, th- I, th- I think that people are just giving too much credit to some cards and that, that makes them, you know, keep losing against aggro. Especially Prowess, because Prowess is fast and plays burn spells, um, which are very versatile. They kill a lot. They they kill creatures. They kill face. They kill walkers. So uh, here's here here's the kicker. I think that a Price of Progress card in Modern right now would push people to not play so greedy with their mana bases. And if people aren't playing greedy mana bases, their decks are actually better. So I think that. Uh, uh, a red evoke card at the price of progress, which I would love for my deck because I think that big mana in Amulet Titan and Trons um, is is too unpunishable. Like you don't really have strong effects against them. Sure, Blood Moon exists, but I don't think that's really enough uh, anymore to take care of these decks. Like Amulet Titan has been getting um, upgrade after upgrade after upgrade. Uh, Eldrazi Tron. Plays very well through Moon. 
Um, we don't talk about Green Tron. But either way, I think that Blood Moon is not enough. Uh, and I think that our Price of Progress would punish these decks um, enough. Uh, and look, look, it's not like I want these decks to stop existing because they wouldn't. Uh, I think that the only deck that plays uh, Price of Progress is Red Aggro. Um, Burn plays it for sure. Prowess probably uh, includes like one or two uh, or maybe three in their sideboard if their big mana matchup is bad, which I don't think it is even. Um, but but it would be a niche sideboard card to punish those decks without deleting them from the meta. Um, I think I think it's important to have hate cards of that caliber to keep things down. Because, um, hey, uh, there's plenty of hate cards against red aggro. There's plenty of hate cards against graveyard. There's even quite a few hate cards against control. But big mana is seriously unpunished right now. And I say this as someone that enjoys playing uh, some big mana decks. Um, heck, uh, I... Uh, I like playing Amulet Titan. Uh, it's a really fun deck, but I think that it deserves to be to have good hate pieces against it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that a price of progress would really harm the the the, the format. Um, and and I do say a price of progress effect because paying two cards to price of progress someone is 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 a fair cost. Um, or, you know, paying four, even five mana is kind of a fair cost, especially at sorcery speed. Uh, but actual price of progress, which is an instant, costs only two mana, so you can kind of, you know, keep being very aggressive while leaving it up, um, is, is probably too much. That one would probably be too much, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful. I know, I know, I know that wizards wouldn't print it either way. Um, I'm assuming the red evoke cards are not going to be good. Um, I don't know, but uh, after them printing Flame Rift and out this hate piece, um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of hopeful, even though I know I shouldn't be. Uh, this is kind of an abusive relationship I have with Wizards. You know, I'm hopeful they print uh, no good red cards for uh, for for any set essentially, and I get mad until the next set where I get excited again and they. Again, print no good red cards. Um, that's unfair. They print no good red aggro cards, uh, which I don't think they have for a while now. Uh, which is honestly dumb. But uh, I'm not. I'm not even gonna comment on on how I think that's dumb. Like in standard. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. That that's what I want for the red evo card. I do want to talk about two other cards. Uh, for burn, which were, uh, okay, let's, I want to look at the other, okay, Dragon's Rage Channeler, costs a red, it's a human shaman, shaman, how do you pronounce that, uh, it's a 1-1, one, one. whenever you cast a non-creature spell, surveil 1, so that's pretty cool, uh, card selection in red is very rare, uh, and it has delirium, as long as there are 4 or more card types among cards in your graveyard, uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler gets plus two, plus two, flying and attacks each combat if able. And, wow. This is like a Red Delver, essentially. It's a small threat that, you know, once you meet some requirement, it gets very strong. And like Delver, this, if you're meeting the requirement, this always comes in as, comes in as a 3-3, three, three, which I think it's honestly better than Delver. Um, the surveil is also not irrelevant, so I think this card is really strong, but not in burn. Um, if you uh, a way to look at it is that this is probably worse than Wild Nacatl, and Wild Nacatl is not good in burn. Lack of haste, being forced into three colors. Well, this 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 doesn't force you into three colors, so let's uh, let's not go over that. Let's not go over that one too much. But being a three three under specific conditions with no haste uh, i don't think it's worth it and and i think that the big thing here is that dragon's rage channeler is very hard to enable in burn uh, it might be doable in uh, prowess i'm not sure it might be very doable in obosh decks because they're very tempo-y mid-rangey um so a, a cheap threat that has card selection 
and evasion might be very strong there, uh, but I don't think that this is a burn card like, ever. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's essentially it. And the other card I wanted to talk about... Oh, no, actually, there's another one that I think is very interesting, uh, which is Obsidian Charmal. It costs three generic, a red and a red. So, yes, it's a five-mana card, but you'll, 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 you'll get why I'm talking about it. Um, it's a 4-4, it's a dragon, it has flying. When it ETBs, it destroys a target non-basing land and opponent controls. But here's the real kicker. Costs one less to cast for each land your opponent controls that could produce um, colorless mana. This means that this costs down to two against Tron, more, more uh, interestingly against Eldrazi Tron, and possibly even against Amulet. Uh, they do have a couple of colorless lands, especially if they start playing Urza Saga, which they should uh, after Modern Horizons 2. But this card looks weirdly overcosted for for burn. But if you if you think about it, maybe it might not be. I think this easily casts. Th I think this easily costs three mana to cast. So that's 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 why I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, this costs three. It's a four four flyer that kills a land. So let's say I'm against Eldrazi. They go turn one scratch their balls because that's what their deck does i go turn one i don't know uh, uh, a, a special line bolt you they go turn two they play chalice of the void okay cool i play land i play i don't know boros charm they go land they play what could they play like okay. thought not series their strongest card okay cool they take away a bolt I draw, play land, play Charm All, and yes, they would take away Charm All if they saw it with Thought Not here, but uh, let's assume I draw it for a turn. I play Charm All. I set them back a land. I have a flying clock. Uh, I'm already ahead on the race because they already took seven for me. And yeah, uh, I'm very likely winning this game. This gets even better if I'm on the if I'm on the play. So after they cast that chalice, I untap, play the third land, play this, set him back a turn, have a, a, a clock on the table. It does look very strong against Eldrazi Tron, which is why I wanted to talk about it. We have no tools to beat Eldrazi Tron, like, properly. Yes, playing the Incinerator version of Burn is, is good against Eldrazi Tron, but that's like a, a, a whole shift in the, the, in the deck's um, playstyle. So this this might actually be the card that makes Eldrazi Tron beatable through the sideboard. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm interested to test it out if Eldrazi Tron uh, ever gets popular because there's a card. I guess I should mention this because it's relevant. There's a two mana card that they're printing that reads: uh, if an opponent doesn't pay, uh, if an if an opponent, what how's it worded? It's it's kind of been spoiled a couple of the void mirror. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no color mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. Um, so the Eldrazi Tron players might might hide in a hole for a while after this gets released. But if Eldrazi Tron, uh, uh, if El I I think the card is definitely good against Eldrazi Tron. Uh, what I need to know if it's good against uh, Amulet Titan. Uh, because if it costs three against Amulet, there's a world where I'm killing a castle or a bounce land and getting a clock plus uh, sending them back a turn. Um, I need to test it. Uh, it's also probably good against generic Tron if you're on the play. Because sometimes they do get out of control. But it's definitely an interesting card that I will consider testing if Eldrazi Tron ever gets too popular. Like, I, I I dedicate three sideboard slots to beat Eldrazi Tron. In a heartbeat, honestly. Uh, I hate playing against that deck. Like, I'm not criticizing the deck here, uh, even if I make jokes around then. I'm not criticizing the deck here. I just hate to play against it because the way they beat us is they just have it. Um, like, literally. There's no interesting lines from them to beat us, specifically. Uh, they just 
have to have their good cards against us, which are Chalice of the Void and Thought Not Seer. If they don't have them, they lose. If they have them uh, in a timely manner, uh, they might just win. Uh, so it's just a hassle to play that one. And there was those, there was one other card. This is the last red card. Well, the last card that I'll be talking about. Which is Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer. Costs a red. Legendary creature, Monkey Pirate. It's the monkey for, for, for from Karizev. Um, it's a 2-1. And it reads, whenever it deals damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card. This is a lot for a 1-drop. This is a very strong 1-drop. Um, on that alone... I'd honestly consider playing one. Like this card's insanely strong. Because not only are you like ramping up in mana is good. Um because, you know, if you get to just dump your hand faster, that's good. Uh it's also a two-powered body on one mana, which is very good. Uh, but you know, uh, the, what's this called? Feral Pup. Is that, is that what this card, this type of stat is called? I think it is. Let me check. I think it is Feral Pup. Which is a, 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 a one mana two one. Uh, might just be in red, but. Ooh, no. <laughs> what? Okay, wait a minute. Is that, is that not? <laughs> Okay, there's there's a name. <laughs> Why did I think it was Feral Pup? Um, Jackal Pup. Okay. What did I, oh, Fearless. Wait, what did I say? Feral Pup. Where, where, where did I get Feral Pup from? I don't know. Uh, but it's 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 a two one. It's it's you know. A strong aggro card. Uh, if you put it on turn one, they kind of have to deal with it right away, or else you're getting damage. You're getting value from it already. Um, the 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 ability to play cards from your opponent's deck is not irrelevant. By the way, um, I'd be very happy to like. I don't know. There are tons of cards that I'd be happy to cast. Uh, from this like if against prowess if you find a creature you get to cast it that's pretty cool uh oh this is really cool if you exile a stormwing because of the treasure you create you get to like bolt them and play stormwing because the treasure gives you blue um that's very cool i do think that those two lines of text are relevant however the reason i would consider including this in burn is because of its dash ability so it has dash which means you cast it for its dash cost which is a one generic mana and a red mana so two mana uh, it comes in with haste and you bounce it back to your hand uh, after that uh, and that's cool if it's coming in late you still get to to use it to deal damage uh, like you know when you're in top decking mode you have probably more mana than you want to use so you get to do this um, this card is very interesting. Very interesting. I might consider playing one. I think this does get, like, exponentially worse in multiples. Like, I would never want to draw a second one. Um, I think that's about it. So I, th I think, I think, I think this fits, like, the Grim Lavamancer and Biblioplex slots, where it's, like, it's a very valuable card. But it's very, like, it's it's kind of off-plan. You kind of have to wait to get value from it. Uh, and it's a bit weird. But I'll, I'm honestly tempted to test one, see how it feels. Um, yeah, the, the card is very interesting. It's obviously going to be very strong in other shells. Like, I think Obosh plays this. Uh, I don't know, Prowess might even want a couple. Uh, it's a very strong card. So I do think it will see some play. I don't think it's busted. I, I I wouldn't like build around this card. I wouldn't make a deck specifically made to play around this card. I don't think it's that good. But I do think it's a very strong one drop. It might be one of the. It it might be contesting for one of the best one drops in red, which I think does well. This it kind of doesn't say too much because red one drops are. Uh, <laughs> 
kind of scuffed when it comes to power. Like, yeah, Goblin Guide's really cool, but it's still it's still a, it's still only a two two. Uh, the 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 prowess boys are cool, but you know they have their limitations. Uh, the red delver I talked about earlier is also pretty cool, and now this one. So those are the those are easily my favorite one drops or the the good one drops I'd say. But I'm very interested to see how how this this little monkey evolves in the in the meta. That's. I think that's pretty much it. I, I don't think I want to talk about anything else. As I've said, I do plan to make like a proper set review when everything's said and done. Um, but but that's probably going to be a slightly different format. Like I might include images. I think it would be a good. I think it would be good. Uh, it's probably going to be longer. It's probably not going to be a, 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 a like a. a actual podcast episode it will just be you know something parallel to that uh so yeah i don't think i, I want to talk about any other red cards uh, there's a prowess to drop but i don't think it's that good um it is a wizard but i think it's it's very it's very prowess only um yeah yeah uh, that's pretty much that's that's been this is this has been the great revel talking about modern horizons 2 um the only thing i want to say before i go is if you want to know when i release episodes the best place to follow me is most likely on twitter um you can also subscribe to the youtube channel because that's where i'm posting them although i do want to post them somewhere else uh because uh, podcasts on youtube are not great because you can't listen to them like um on the go or anything like that so I will try to upload uh, previous and this episode to to, to somewhere else. Um, anyways, thank you for listening listening in, and see you next time.